I'm Amy and I am the BBC Kids Children and Family Ministry Director here at Becker Baptist Church. If you are watching this video with me today, it's because you have volunteered to make an investment in the lives of kids in our church and impact them for the glory of God. And so we want to thank you for your part in just reaching the next generation and serving alongside of us. None of this is possible without you. The reason for this video is for those of you that didn't make it to our volunteer training. This training is going to cover a wide variety of topics um, because we have several ministries for kids um, from nursery to a Sunday morning Sunday school program to a children's service during our worship hour every Sunday and a midweek program as well as other activities and events throughout the year. Um, and so many of you serve in maybe one or several of those areas. And so this will be a broad overarching uh, video training for you. Um, and I may just kind of touch on a few of the things um, that individually impact this ministry or um, volunteers. Uh, every one of you should receive or will be receiving a volunteer handbook. And I just encourage you, I'm not gonna go through everything in this handbook, in this video, but I would love it to know that you've gone through it, that you've read through it, it has some really great things in there, and I will point out a few things in there eventually in this video. Um, but what I really wanna do is I just wanna um, cast vision for this ministry and um, just what does that look like for BBC Kids and the ministry that we do here. Uh, so that we're all in unity about that and that we're all on the same page. Um, we all know that the goal is to know him and to make him known. And this is just some ways that we as a ministry want to do that. Um, and so first things first, the goal here for BBC Kids is that we want kids to grow. And we want kids and our ministry to grow um, and what that means is that we want kids to grow in their faith and we want to see our ministry grow so that we can reach even more kids um, for Jesus. And so we have to ask ourselves, well, how? How are we going to do that? And so here at Becker Baptist Church, we want to grow deep before growing wide. And so when it comes to growth, we know that fast growth isn't always best. And so there isn't always just a quick fix to things. And so the real secret to growth is health. And we all know that when something is healthy, what happens? It grows. And that's what we want here. And so what we're committed to here at BBC Kids is that we want to create a healthy ministry first and foremost. And so we believe that if we're building and creating a healthy ministry, then the conditions for kids and for our ministry to grow will be right. And so we're going to do that by pursuing six key um, areas. And those are the things that I want to go through really quickly with you. And so the first thing is discipleship. Everything that we do is structured around four key spiritual habits. And so these are the things that we believe will help kids grow spiritually. And so those are really the backbone of our entire ministry. So every quarter is based around one of those key discipleship habits. And that we kind of put into our programming. We put it into a discipleship that's happening at home that we sent home as a resource. Um, we put that into whatever our event is for that quarter. And so you'll see that kind of play out throughout the year um, in terms of the discipleship piece. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about what those four key habits are in a minute. Um, but the next thing is the teaching. We teach with kids in mind. And so we have to teach them in the way that kids learn best. And that is different based on the stage and development and the needs of each child. Um, or each classroom. And so um, that's another piece and a point, and we'll talk a little bit about teaching in a moment as well. And then our weekly programming is another area that we want to see health in. And so those are the things that we plan and create weekly programs for kids 
And we want that to be fun. We want that to be welcoming because when we do, that sets the stage for kids to grow. So we find that really important. The other thing is events. We don't just do random events to fill the calendar, to fill your calendar. We want to do events that are strategic for kids to build relationships with others and with God. The fifth thing is parents. We don't just care about kids. We care about their families too. And so we want to have a strategy that helps us connect and support parents along with what we're doing. And all of you volunteers are a really important part of that strategy and we'll get to that. Um, and then the last thing is volunteers. All of you, if we're gonna have a healthy ministry, it starts with us, it starts with our team. And so my job is to invest in each of you so that you can better invest in kids. And so if we want kids to grow, we have to grow first. Um, so those are just a few things that I wanna to touch on as we go through, and then we'll go through some really quick policy things. Um, so let's start back talking about discipleship. We all know we don't disciple kids with sermons. Um, we don't disciple them with classes or with workbooks either. Um, discipleship isn't a program, it's a process. And so it's something that's organic, it's unpredictable, it's a little messy sometimes. And that doesn't mean that we can't put a strategy around it because here I am talking about strategies. So we are putting a strategy around it, but just discipleship is not a program, okay? It's a process. And so let's go back to those four disciplines and those four spiritual habits that I talked about that we're gonna be talking about or using throughout the whole year. And as I said, this will be in every ministry that we're in. And so the first is spending time with God. And sometimes that's the only habit that people think about when they think about growing spiritually. But it's really only just one of four. And so um, if kids are ever gonna make their faith their own, then they've got to be spending time in God's word on their own. It means they have to open up the Bible on their own. They have to have conversations with God on their own. And they have to discover how best that they can connect with God and what gifts God's given them so that they can worship and serve him on their own. And so that's one. Um, the second is spending time with others. Engaging in healthy community can and should be a spiritual habit that we help kids develop here. And so I have to say healthy community doesn't mean just hanging out with Christian kids, okay, or other Christians. This is a spiritual habit that's all about growing in Christ-like relationships with everyone. So it doesn't matter who it is still that they can have a Christ-like relationship with everyone. And so we do this by having small classroom sizes, um, empowering kids to engage in the relationships with others and with people in their community, um, encouraging them to reach out to new people and to others, um, those sorts of things. The third spiritual habit is use your gifts. Kids need to know that God made them unique and that he made them special, and that he gave them gifts and talents and passions and resources that he's given them to serve him. And so we need to figure out and help them find out what those gifts are, and then they need to use those gifts. And so they need to be able to use their gifts to love God, to love others, to influence the world around them, and all of those things, because we know that when kids discover who God made them to be and they use those gifts, then they're gonna grow, right? And then the last thing is share your story. Kids need to learn how to talk about God. And so sharing your story is just a spiritual habit that makes faith a regular part of your conversation. It's a go-to topic of the day and any time we're talking with someone in our lives. So when we talk about God and God's place in our story or more accurately, our place in God's story, um, it helps us believe, it helps us understand 
and it helps us take ownership of our faith. And so we want to help them start formulating and figuring out how to share their story. And we know that their stories are all different and at different places and are still growing, but there's still a story there and there's still something to share. So we want to help them be able to do that. So you're probably thinking at this point, how is this a strategy, right? And so for us, each quarter, we're gonna focus on one of those spiritual habits. And so that will guide everything that we do that quarter, whatever the discipline is that we're sharing with families um, to work on, whether it's an event or whatever it is. And so here's what I want you to kind of think of. So fall is when we focus on spending time with others. And so this is a time when it's the beginning of the year, we're trying to help kids find safe community here. Um, and we want them to be part of and engaged with the community here and the kids here, whether that's Sunday morning or the Wednesday night community, so that they can feel safe and then they keep coming and growing with us throughout the whole year. And then in the winter, we will focus on using your gifts to serve others. So there's nothing better than the holidays than to learn how to use your gift, gifts and to focus on helping kids um, see other people's needs or what challenges there might be that are out there instead of thinking about themselves. And so we do ser different service projects, different things. Um, at Awana, we do Operation Christmas Child. Um, in Sunday School, Children's Church, we may do something else. We may adopt a foster child at Christmas or we may do a drive for backpack buddies. Um, some of those type, different types of things, but kids usually are involved in the process, but we try to find some things where um, they can use their gifts to serve others. And then in the spring, after kids have spent half the year now in our building and they're here and they're making relationships with others and they're trusting, um, they're building trust with the other kids in the class, now we wanna challenge them to start to go deeper in those relationships and go deeper with God by challenging them to really start focusing on their personal disciplines. And then summer, during the summer, think VBS, spending time with friends, getting ready for a new school year. This is when we help students focus on verbalizing their stories and challenging them to share their stories with others. And so those are kind of how those spiritual disciplines will work all throughout the year. Um, then for those of you who are teaching or teachers, uh, one of the areas that we want to focus on really well is teaching. And we all know that it's about something more than just teaching sermons or teaching a lesson. And so when you're preparing, um, there's three questions that I like to ask myself when I'm preparing to teach. And I think they'll really help you as you prepare to do your lesson. Um, there's three questions you wanna answer in the lesson. And the first is what? What are we talking about here today? This morning, tonight, whether that's Sunday morning, Wednesday night, what are we talking about? The second question is, so what? Why does it matter to God? Why does it matter to us? And the third question is, now what? What should we do about what we just learned? And so you have what, so what, now what? Three very simple things to put together that little lesson for your kids each week. Sometimes when we hear the word teaching or sermons, people get scared. I think people are afraid to volunteer if they hear the word teacher in the verbiage of what the volunteer role is. Um, and yes, teaching and sermons is really part of what we do, but it's not the primary way that we teach kids. There's only a very, very small percentage of kids that learn best by listening to a sermon. And so there's a lot more effective ways that kids learn. And so we want to be committed to teaching all of those and using different techniques that can be part of our teaching every week. And I'm gonna give you some ideas and we'd love to hear your ideas too. So if you have some other ideas, reach out to me um, and we can share them with the rest of the volunteers. But here's some things you can add into your lesson planning each week. So questions and polls. Give kids a chance 
to share their opinions or their thoughts during the lesson. This keeps them engaged. It gives them a better understanding. We get to hear what their perspectives are and things that we're talking about when we give them an opportunity to answer questions or answer a poll or poll the kids or the class or whatever. Another thing is personal stories. Give kids real life examples of faith, doubt, difficulties, all those things that maybe you've learned from and you share that personal story with them. It reminds kids that they're not alone and it's okay to have those questions or those doubts or go through difficulties. Another thing is images, videos, music, all those things engage kids ears and eyes and they help they it helps us capture kids attention when they might seem to get a little off track or whatever um, we can kind of get their attention back when they start to wander using um, some media uh, another idea is object lessons object lessons give concrete experiences that help kids understand and remember abstract ideas um, we love using um, object lessons during Children's Church and I just think that they really stick with kids um, long term. Um, activities. Any way that you can get your kids in your class moving, interacting, um, maybe acting out what they're learning, it kind of helps them better remember what they learned because they didn't just hear it, now they've actually experienced it. Um, moments of reflection. And this is a hard one, sometimes we don't think about this, but actually just giving kids a moment of silence to just sit quietly. Maybe they write out what they're thinking about from the lesson, or they're just thinking about it, or they have a time to pray. Um, this, These moments, and it doesn't have to be long, but it's just time for them to process everything that they've just learned. Also, give them an opportunity for a response give kids a chance to do something about what they just learned. Um, like maybe they're gonna make a commitment about something or maybe they're gonna take a next step and do something. Um, but make sure that they have an opportunity to respond to the lesson somehow. And now there's one more thing that we use when we're teaching kids. And I would say it's probably the most important thing and that's discussion. Discussion gives kids an opportunity to have conversation with their peers, with their leader, about what they've just learned or what they're learning. And so discussions aren't meant to be a time to like review and summarize a lesson. It's really meant to be a time for kids to really personalize and apply what they've just learned. And so kids learn best by processing out loud and asking questions, maybe even giving you some pushback, um, but having the opportunity to share opinions, um, listening to what their peers are saying, maybe they are debating each other, um, but it just gets them involved in the learning process. And that can only happen if there's a time for a discussion. So I just think that's a really important part. So if you're a volunteer in a class, your job is really important. And it can be difficult too, um, but without you taking the time to have that discussion with your kids, it's more like they were just in a lecture or listening to a lecture. And so we just really wanna help kids process and learn and be challenged to actually apply what it is that they're learning. So just a little bit about some tips and things about teaching um, that can help. And I'm here, you can reach out to me anytime for help with teaching a lesson or resources or tools that you might need. I'm happy, happy to help. Um, so then another area that we're focusing on is weekly programming. And this is something that we really want to think about in terms of these things are not just for insiders, okay? So there is this thing that happens in our brains whenever we learn something new. When we learn something new, it's difficult for us to remember what it was like not to know it. And so we even start to assume that because we know something that everyone else probably knows it too, right? 
And so you're probably thinking at this point, what is she talking about and why does that have to do with kids ministry? Well, I'm gonna tell you it has a lot to do with kids ministry, okay? If you've been following Jesus for a long time, it's going to be really difficult for you to remember, to vividly remember what it was like not to be a Christian, right? And if you've been reading your Bible for a long time, you're gonna forget that not everyone knows what Ecclesiastes is or what the numbers in John 3.16 mean, right? And if you've been going to church for a while, it's not going to be easy to see your church through the eyes of someone who doesn't usually go to church. And so since we know like all the words of the songs, graves to garden, we know all the words, right? The difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament, we know all of that. We know the definition of what a Pharisee is, what redemption is, what Ephesians is. We know all these things. But the reality is, it is hard for us to remember what it was like when we didn't know those things. And we're not doing it intentionally, it doesn't happen int intentionally, but it's just a natural drift of the culture to cater at insiders at the expense, cater to insiders at the expense of outsiders. And so here at BBC Kids, we want to just make sure that even though we sometimes might make the mistake of planning for church insiders, we want to be more strategic and we want to be welcoming to those outsiders, okay? So here's just a couple ways to prevent that. First, have fun. We don't play games, do silly things or anything without, re with, without a reason. And so we want to make our ministry fun because the reality is fun breaks down walls. It allows people to start forming connections with each other. And when a new kid comes to church, they're gonna feel uncomfortable. But here's the thing, a little fun can go a long way in helping them feel welcome. The next thing is ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions about how we've always done things. We always need to be evaluating what we do by asking the question, if I had never been to church before, how would this feel? And what questions or obje objections would I have about it? So ask questions. The next thing is explain. Even if you are pretty confident, pretty sure that everyone in your class knows exactly what a Pharisee is, briefly explain it anyway. Because the reality is, it's going to put everyone at ease and the person who doesn't know isn't going to say that they don't know and they're not going to want to admit it. And so just give a brief explanation every time when you're teaching and talking. The last thing is acknowledge. It's really okay to just simply acknowledge that there's people in the room that might not be familiar as someone else with church or maybe they don't believe yet or whatever. Um, but when we just acknowledge it, our words speak volumes to kids. And so it makes them feel more welcome. And so I just wanna just mention that real quick and just say that let's just work really hard this year to view everything we do through the lens of a first time visitor. If we don't, we run the risk of catering to insiders at the expense of welcoming everyone else. And so those are weekly programming things. You know what our weekly programs are. Sunday school, children's church, midweek, Awana clubs, things like that. Um, let's work at not just thinking about insiders, but welcoming outsiders. And then we have the events. There are a lot of things that we could put on the kids' ministry calendar. Camps, concerts, retreats, trips, conferences, tournaments, game nights, movie nights, theme nights. <laughs> we could just go on and on with this list forever, right? But if we did every event that we ever thought about doing, we'd have a few problems. We'd be adding to the chaos of family calendars that are already full. We'd be burning out all of our volunteers, all of you, 
because we know you guys are pretty busy too, we'd be giving kids so many options that they probably would only attend a few things each year, which would result in lower participation overall in all the things that we were trying to do. And we'd be spending time, money, and resources on things that really weren't all that strategic. And so with so many options, we've decided to implement a strategy that's gonna help guide what we do and when we do them. And so what we're doing now is fewer events with a bigger impact. We won't do everything we're told or asked or told about, but we will do some things and we'll do them on purpose. And so the events are gonna be strategically designed to connect kids with each other, with trusted adults like you and with God. When it comes to events, our win is not about participation, it's about strategy. And so even sometimes the most attended, well thought out um, events actually can hinder our growth if they're not actually leading kids somewhere strategic. And so those are why our quarterly events will have something to do with um, our spiritual discipline. Now, yes, we do have some fun, just fun events, for community and outreach and things like that. But in terms of our focus for our ministry, um, they will be strategic. And then parents. So we've talked a lot about ministry to kids. And now I just wanna spend a moment talking about ministry to families because yes, that's our job too. And so every kid belongs to a family. Every kid is being parented by at least one adult who may or may not be their parent. And so there are two mistakes we often make when it comes to parents. We forget they exist. We try to lead kids without ever engaging parents. And that means that when we do that, we limit our ability to connect with and support the kid long-term, okay? And number two, we often get frustrated by parents, right? Sometimes maybe you disagree with a how a kid's parents um, doing something or think you think that they maybe should, should discipline their child more or whatever it is. Sometimes you might just be annoyed because the parent's not returning your messages or they're not turning in forms on time or whatever it is, they're not bringing their kid to church um, or letting them come to an event. We just get frustrated with parents sometimes. And so I'm just gonna challenge each of you. Instead of getting frustrated because parents aren't meeting our expectations, Let's reevaluate our expectations. What if we stopped expecting parents to trust us or know what we know or care about what we care about or agree with us and support what it is that we're doing? What if we tried harder to earn parents' trust? Not every parent is gonna naturally trust you or be interested in having a relationship with you or maybe they won't even want you to invest in their kid's life, and that's okay. But instead of being frustrated by that, here's the question I want to have you ask this year. How can I earn that parent's trust, okay? That's the question I keep asking in terms of ministry for here at BBC Kids, and it's the question that I hope that you're gonna be asking yourself this year as well. And then lastly, volunteers. Here's the thing. At this point, you're probably thinking, why is she telling us about all of these strategies? Why is she doing this training? The reality is, it's because I need you, each and every one of you. You're not just volunteers, okay? You're a major integral part of this team, and I consider you leaders, disciplers, and influencers. And so I need you to step up in big ways to help lead kids this year and disciple them and invest in them in ways that we never have before. And so I'm not asking you to do something easy. I'm asking you to do something that matters. And God's mission has always been big, difficult, sometimes a little scary too, um, but we're in this together. And so whatever you need, to be successful in this ministry, whatever 
volunteer role you play for BBC Kids this year, I'm here for you, I'm your champion, and you can come see me. So, this year might not be easy, but it's going to matter, and I'm so excited that each of you are along with me. So just a few more policy things that are just important for um, each of you that serve. Again, you will have your handbook. If you don't have one, see me to get one. Um, they can be found at the check-in welcome for BBC Kids. In the front, depending on what role you play, um, you will see all the different things. There's a little bit of information about some of the things I went over and talked about. Um, but then there's more specifics. If you're a classroom volunteer or a teacher, um, if you are a greeter for kids, teaching, um, all those different things. So, but I do wanna go over some of the fine print things in here just really, really quick. Um, so these are safety guidelines. Some of you have already attended our safety training. Um, if you didn't, um, it is available on the church website, so you can take a look at that. Um, they're just really important things that um, we as a church have implemented. And so it's just remembering that there are healthy boundaries that we all have to maintain with kids um, for their safety and for ours. And so um, there's a whole bit in here about not being alone with a child. We always provide two leaders in a classroom um, and usually multiple kids in a classroom. It's usually not just a single teacher and a student. Um, but just things like how to supervise them when they need to go to the bathroom, different things. There's instructions in here. If there's ever some sort of incident or something, a child gets hurt or they fall or they get ill, um, always see me, contact me. We'll decide whether an injury or an incident report needs to be completed. Um, there's diaper changing procedure in here for those of you who work in the nursery. Um, there's a little bit about practicing safe touch or appropriate touch um, with hugs, hands, um, and holding kids. Um, and then it talks about some things of inappropriate touch, things that maybe should be reported, um, and things that you should avoid. Um, also, just reporting dangerous situations. Um, our church policy, and we're all mandated reporters, means that we have to report any suspicions of child abuse or neglect. Um, so there's some things in here and some signs about that, and you can let me know if you have any concerns about that. Um, allergies, being aware of allergies. Um, many of you serve snack, and usually I provide the snack. Some of you provide your own snack, which is also great. Um, but let's just make sure if we are going to provide snack that we have a special note posted on the door or something that says what snack is going to be listed. You always can check your student's name tag, their security check-in tag will have a note if they have an allergy or anything if you're concerned before serving a snack. Um, know when to text parents, there's a little bit about that or how to handle emergencies. Every kid's tag also has a phone number to text or call or get a hold of parents, whatever the situation may be. Um, there's a little bit in here about how to discipline, how to redirect them, how to remove a child if need to, if we need to refer a child back to the parents. Um, please keep me posted and in the loop on any of those types of things. Um, and then just some helps for like avoiding some behavior issues. And then just again, just a quick thing about the check-in, just make sure that children are coming to class with their stickers on. Um, they have to be checked into the system first before they come to class. They have to claim their sticker and wear their sticker. And then someone with the identifying sticker must pick them up. If someone doesn't have their sticker, I know there's times um, during the midweek program because kids are dropped off and parents leave and then someone picks up. Sometimes it's a mom or dad and mom dropped off and dad's picking up and maybe um, they didn't see each other in between to get a sticker. Uh, generally, we will know because again, a student's ID will say if there's any compromising situations where a child should or shouldn't be picked up by someone in particular. Um, but also then just have them come see me to get an okay. I'll usually just check an ID or something to make sure it's dad or something. 
um, if they lose their stickers. But all of that is in here. I just encourage you to take a few moments just to kind of go through um, all of that. And then um, we would really love if all of our volunteers would wear their BBC Kids Serve shirts when they're serving. It just helps you stand out. It's a place where a parent or a new person or a first time visitor could just contact and know that they could come to like, oh, she's serving here. I can ask her this question or I'm sure of, unsure about this. That looks like someone who knows something. Um, if we're just all dressed in regular street clothes, they don't know who to ask. They don't know who is there serving and who is there dropping off their kids or just at church that day. Um, so I would really love it if you would wear your BBC Kids Serve shirts. Um, if you need one that we don't have a size, we can get them here for you. Just let me know. And um, if you're an Awana volunteer, it's up to you. If you would prefer to have the Awana t-shirt um, for your class, um, we have those. Just see me. If you just want to wear the BBC Kids Serve shirt, that's fine as well. Um, I'll leave that up to each of you. Um, we have a calendar. If you are serving in Awana, um, we are doing a pacing type system. Every kid will learn the lesson together each night of clubs and we have a, a schedule for that. And so um, you'll each get a schedule for that. I have included and printed off for each Awana teacher, some memory verse memorizing tips, um, as well as like a sample schedule for the night, how to schedule your evening, if that's a help for you. I'll just make sure that each classroom has those in them. Some of the classrooms got switched and moved this year, um, so see me to make sure you know which class you're in. You are welcome to come at any time if you are a Sunday school teacher um, or a midweek club teacher to come and decorate, make the room your own, do what you'd like to um, make it fun and welcoming and inviting for kids. Um, and if you want my help with that as well, you can just see me. Um, let's see, anything else? And another change I just wanna mention really quick with the Awana program is that we've not done this before, but starting this year, all the kids will come up and enter the sanctuary and we will begin the evening with about a 10 or 15 minute um, allotted time there together um, kindergarten through fifth grade and we'll be doing a couple worship songs we'll be talking maybe just some brief announcements or some fun um, we have some fun ideas for the year um, we may have a couple speakers I know professor wonder is planning to come a couple times this year and so he'll just kind of share up there at that time and then everyone will be dismissed to class um, so please make sure that you're here you have your class ready and that you're up in the sanctuary waiting um, in a row for your class. Um, I think that's it. I'm so thankful for each of you. I would really appreciate it if each of you would complete this and return it to me. It helps me um, know a little bit more about you and ways that I can appreciate you throughout the year. Um, so please return this to me. And then also I have a goal sheet for volunteers. Um, this would be mainly for our full-time volunteers. Um, not necessarily people who are kind of rotational. So I would say like Sunday school teachers, Hawana teachers. Um, this is a set of goals for a semester basically. And if you can complete these in the semester and bring it to me, I will have something special for you. Okay. Um, so I think that is it. Um, thank you all for going alongside um, and being here to support the ministry and the things that we do for kids um, and impacting the next generation. If you have any questions, concerns, um, or need anything, any resources or tools or things for the year, see me. Thanks so much.